Larson right there. Sierra Larson. Nice work. Okay, this next guy does a little something on Comedy Central's The Daily Show called Back in Black. He's got a couple new specials coming out on Comedy Central. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Lewis Black. Give it up! Anthrax 
Olympics in Rolla, Missouri. I went to Rolla, Missouri because my life is a perfect oyster. <laughs> Missouri, you drive two hours on Route 66. I wrote a song about Route 66, not that part of the highway. <laughs> they already had all the fun, and they got to that part, and they were so tired, they fell asleep and died, and they hit you right. <laughs> Nothing on the road, completely desolate. First sign I saw, bright blue background, white letters, Jesus. <laughs> Not a phone number or nothing. <laughs> but that's odd, and just as I forgot about it, there it was. Right blue sign again, Jesus. <laughs> if you're Jewish, and you're driving down a desolate road, and you see two signs that say Jesus, when you see the third one, that's a tip to turn around and go the fuck home. <laughs> The people in Rollo were worried about getting it. People in Rollo were scared. I don't want to get answers. Just what do you think? It's going to arrive in a Kmart catalog? <laughs> They're not worried about killing you. They're not interested in killing you. Look where you live. You're already dead. <laughs> smallpox had a vaccine. I got a scar to prove it. And back then, they didn't have the proper medical equipment. They used a coat cap and they just scratched me. <laughs> if, I get, if I get that stuff, I'm going to file suit. Because they took me out of class to get that smallpox vaccine. And if I had been in that class, I wouldn't have to do this bullshit for a living. <laughs> smallpox and anthrax. Meanwhile, we had to have a spring in 40 years, and when it finally came, it was fall. <laughs> I kept screaming at people, look at the calendar, we're going backwards. We're going backwards. <laughs> so get a grip, we've got to do something about this. this. I thought it was environmental terrorism. You don't know, you don't fucking know. Some guy in Afghanistan, one of those mountains with aluminum foil on his head, a couple of black and white TVs, and he's fucking with us. <laughs> it's not it. environmental terrorism, it's global warming. If it's global warming, we should do something about it. But we don't. We, there was a global warming treaty, 135 nations signed it. We didn't. No, uh, we didn't sign it. We wonder why the rest of the world thinks we're a group of arrogant fucks. 135 countries sign it, we go, uh, kiss my ass. We don't care. <laughs> you sign it. You fucking sign it. Cross your fingers and sign it. Pretend you're interested. 135 nations sign it. The nations that couldn't even read the treaty signed it. <laughs> they had to explain it to them. Burr, burr, sweaty, sweaty, sign it, sign it. <laughs> we didn't sign the treaty because George Bush Jr., our president, didn't, doesn't think there's global warming because I guess he doesn't have any. Skip! <laughs> he was an idiot until September 11th, then he became a genius, then he reminded us he was an idiot by choking on a pretzel. <laughs> Make that.
had your life's ambition to find a guy. Nobody has. Because if anybody in Chuck down pretzel, they're smart enough not to tell anybody. What do you go? Look, I'm a sword swallower. Took blood on his long face. Even the uh, even the Weather Channel didn't discuss global warming. They don't even talk about it. There's there's a channel for you. I'd rather watch a bowl of shit. <laughs> steaming, steaming. It's gotta be steaming. Otherwise, you go, oh, that's fake. <laughs> Motion, it catches the eye. It's the most watched cable channel in America. I'll repeat that. It's the most watched cable channel in America. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I, I tell you this. You know, they were worried about terrorists immobilizing us. And meanwhile, a good portion of our countrymen were watching weather. <laughs> you, you can't get any more immobile than that. <laughs> You're saying, I'd go to the window, but it's too far. <laughs> you want to know what the weather is, you go to the window, you open it up, and you stick your hand out. And if you want to know what the temperature is, you drive by a bank. <laughs> Stop watching the Weather Channel. I got sick of it. Stop watching it because I went to Detroit a year ago in April, and they said it was going to be in the upper 60s that weekend, and I packed accordingly, and it snowed. <laughs> And so as I stood on the sidewalk in my shorts, looking up at the gray sky, snow pelting me in the face, I thought, wow, the bricks were in close. And that's when I decided there should just be a channel with chimpanzees. We'd give them darts in the dartboard, and they throw the darts. 8 and 9 is 17, 13 is 30, 11 is 41, and 6 is 47. The chimp says, it'll be 47. It's 86. You go, well, what are you going to do? The weatherman's got you. Chip! <laughs> Just before I came over here, I was watching uh, college basketball, because that's, if I'm hooked on something, it's college basketball. I don't know that's not even going to what the fuck that means. <laughs> but I like college basketball. It's the NCAA tournament. And I'm watching an Indiana one. And I let fucking no, get a grip, get a fucking grip. Right? I watch it, I don't go, okay? oh yeah, Indiana, boy, am I excited. There's a state, there's a fucking state. Hoosier, 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 which means who's here. That's what it means. They don't even know who's in the state. Well, then you Indiana boys will love this. So I'm, I, I thought they played a great game. It was fun to watch. The coach comes out, you know, what do you think? You know, you're gonna, you, you wouldn't think you're going to be in this position today. He said, well, I did. Because, you know, God, God has seen fit this year. And, you know, I, I feel chosen by God. I'm like, you know, fuck you. Okay? What level of arrogance do you live at, shithead? Chose you? If God chose you, keep it a fucking secret. Okay? <laughs> God chose me when I got this, got that. It's like unfucking believable. I, I would believe that if he had a team of midgets. Okay? <laughs>
for it. It's intolerable. You tell them you can do an interview, but you, you fucking, you just keep God out of it. Go to a church and tell them. Here's my favorite. <clears throat> David Robinson. I've only told this once before, and this could be the end of the act. <laughs> Seriously, there's not a lot of cities I would try this in. <laughs> but since you drink so much coffee, you'll forget about it in 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, but I was watching David Robinson a couple of years ago, I guess, whenever San Antonio won, I can't remember. And, they, and uh, David Robinson is seven foot nine guy. <laughs> and he said, they asked me at the game, you know, you, you, you know, you know what, what about the game and how do you feel about the year? And he said, well, you know, I always felt Jesus was with me the whole year, you know. And I thought that was odd that a big tall guy was, you know, would need any help. <laughs> it's basketball. It's basketball, okay? If he was, like, swimming, I think, okay, that's an interesting point. <laughs> You're two feet away from the fucking... That's it. That's it. Jesus was really great, and Jesus kept his team together. Jesus was really great to my family, and, and if it weren't for Jesus, you know, I, I don't think my family would have stayed together this year, and I don't think we would have won this championship. And then I'm thinking, you know, he's gonna, the next thing's going to be, I'm like, you know, if Jesus were here, I'd like to suck his dick. <laughs> We have to be 
young group of people who created a tax form that's written in our own language that we take to another human being called an accountant. And I have got the time and the energy to tell you what those pricks are up to. <laughs> No one ever has applauded accountants. <laughs> ever. Ever. Anywhere. Ever. That's a town that's way too fucking polite. <laughs> we take it to the accountant. We pay the accountant money to translate our own language back to us. <laughs> says, move into block 37R, and I say, no. <laughs> We're paying you a lot of money, you dumb nuts, you move it. Then why are we moving it? It's the same amount, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. <laughs> and then scrunch up the form, scrunch it the fuck up. <laughs> and then, you can have a short form. <laughs> I'm self-employed. That's what they call what I do. <laughs> As opposed to need psychiatric care. <laughs> See the Jesus sucking the dick incident. <laughs> I get other forms to fill out. Forms like IBQ30, kiss my dick. <laughs> For 15 years. Oh, shut the fuck up. Okay? Yeah, you weird. <laughs> but shut the fuck up, okay? Seriously, if you're gonna heckle, be on time and be good at it. Okay? <laughs> Which is unbelievable. 
You never hear the middle class yelling about that. You don't hear the poor yelling about it because we're too fucking tired. <laughs> we're too busy looking for receipts. <laughs> Why would the rich bitch about their taxes? They actually have the money to pay their taxes. Show, you know, what do they have to bitch about? It's unbelievable. Whenever I ever a rich person bitch that they're paying too much in taxes, I usually turn to them and go, hey, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Let's look at a tax form. You see here, that's called a loophole. And that allows you to keep shit, and I don't even understand what the sentence means. <laughs> I did a, uh, a special for Comedy Central about taxes, and, uh, and as a result, I had to go out and interview people in, uh, in Central Park and stuff, which was really a treat for me because I'm such a people person. <laughs> woman actually said to me, the only woman, she said that, uh, she said that the, um, the re she felt her, her and her husband were in the upper tax bracket, the highest one you could be in. She wanted to know why the federal government was punishing her by charging her and her husband so much in taxes. She said, I don't understand why they're punishing us because we're better, smarter, and richer. I expected more of an audible reaction, but we'll move on. <laughs> What do you say when somebody says something like that? Because once again, that's something that somebody shouldn't say aloud. And by saying it aloud, I think she may have a shot at going to hell. <laughs> it's always tough when somebody says something really stupid to you because you don't know what to do. Especially something that just irritates the shit out of you. And especially since I'm representing Comedy Central and I'm on a camera. See, I've got to keep my face in some sort of position that looks normal as opposed to that. <laughs> and you want to keep your teeth closed because if you open them, your, your basic reaction after you hear that is to just bite her neck. <laughs> and then bring her to the ground for a minute. And just, oh, oh. <laughs> the other group of people who bitch about taxes are people like the Michigan militia who are the Arizona gun fuckers. <laughs> I'm sure there's a group in Oregon, too, that's wandering around the woods. You know these groups of people. They're dressed up in camouflage. They hang out together. These are men who think they're an army, but they're not an army because they're delusional. <laughs> they're paranoid. They feel the U.S. government is going to take away their freedom, their freedom to hallucinate that they're in an army. <laughs> The way it works is, is that they shouldn't be paying taxes because it's not in the Constitution. Imagine that. It's not in the Constitution. I don't care if it's in the Constitution or not. It's, it's part of the tough shit laws. <laughs> it's idiotic to say we shouldn't pay taxes. It's absolutely stupid not to know that there's got to be a minimal amount of tax. That the money has to be raised. We live in communities. We're not in the woods, you know, like fucking by a stream taking a shit. <laughs> okay? We have sanitation and bridges and roads, and we've got, we've got education and a ton of other things we got to pay for. Because if we don't pay people to do that stuff, then who's got to do it? Us. <laughs> I don't want to get out home tomorrow and have them call me from when I get to New York. Hey, Lewis, you better get out here. There's a problem at the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> if taxes are important and taxes are math, how come in no math class did they ever teach taxes? <laughs> I took math every year that I was in school because I was told that eventually it'd be revealed to me how math applied to my daily life, and I'm still waiting for that memo. <laughs> Is like geometry, that really helped. <laughs> Talk about a waste of time, I still can't play pool. <laughs> then there's trigonometry, which is an interesting course because it has nothing to do with anything, anyway. <laughs> Even in the future, it will not apply. <laughs> Trigonometry 
country was used when I was in school to separate students. A group of us would say, now you go and you take trig, and the rest of you go to the wood shop. <laughs> Don't get too near the legs, and stop making so many penises. <laughs> put shit in my head. There was a teacher that came in every day, she had a shovel, shoveled the shit, went right in my head. But I did a lot of drugs to get rid of the shit, the shit's still there, and now it's in beautiful colors. It's unbelievable. Words like sine, cosine, tangent, nobody uses those words. Nobody. Well, I use the word cosine when I call my parents and go, we're gonna have to cosine. and did something that was just spectacular. It was called the Tax Stimulus Program. It was the, one of the dumbest things I've ever seen a government do. <laughs> this is what happens when Democrats and Republicans get together. They can't think alone, and together, they think less. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The idea was this. It's quite simply, the U.S. government would send out a $300 check to a group of Americans who made a certain amount of money. And those who didn't make a certain amount of money who desperately could use $300 would get a poke in the eye. <laughs> back then we had a ton of money and the Democrats and the Republicans thought there was nothing we could do with the money because everything was in great shape. Bridges and roads, spectacular. <laughs> Education, top notch. Airport security, couldn't be tighter. They would stimulate the economy by sending out a $300 check to individuals. And I knew that was bullshit because I'd taken economics. You know? You keep talking to the whole act. It's just stupid. You know that? Is this difficult for you? Yeah, I did take economics. You want to fucking, should I bring in the resume next time? Fuck Seriously. Seriously. I threw $3,000 out of the house. somebody. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
something you can learn out of one bloodshot eye. <laughs> After I first failed the first two tests, I grabbed the teacher by the throat and I said, hey, listen, asshole. <laughs> You know, why are you teaching this at this ungodly hour, you know? Are you trying to keep your shit a secret? <laughs> Quite simply, though, the, the, the reason the $300 check wasn't going to stimulate the economy was because nobody got the $300 check and looked at it and went, Hosanna! I'm free at last! <laughs> Look at that! $30 for rent, $20 for the car, 7 bucks for food, me, I'm home free. <laughs> All three hundred dollars did was remind people how fucked they are. <laughs> three hundred dollars would have stimulated the economy if it was all oh, 1956. <laughs> We'd have been better off if they sent us blockbuster video cooper. <laughs> A lot of my friends who worked their asses off didn't make enough money, but they made enough money to get a check. Some of my friends got a check for like $18.31, which is a great check to get if you want something to hold your dick wet. <laughs> Is it cost, here's the cost, it cost the U.S. government $34 million to send a check to every American to tell them that their check was in the mail. <laughs> I wish the government had just come in my mouth. <laughs> dirtiest jokes ever and made it a political joke. That's all I gave a shit about. That's all I gave a shit about. And I was trying to make a point. Trying to make a point. I don't really want to see Trent Lutz's penis. Ever. Ever. Okay? We talk about American common sense. The president talks about it all the time. Oh, that was what will see us through American common sense, which is kind of exciting because I've never seen it. We don't have it. We don't have common sense. We never have. If there's a problem with us as a country, that's it. We haven't got a lick of it. We, we're not even close. We're not even, we see it occasionally, we go, oh, and then it's gone. <laughs> it's something we haven't learned to cultivate. I don't know if it's because we're such a young country. I don't know what the deal is, but we haven't got common sense. If we had common sense, you put that letter in with the check, asshole. <laughs> On the day after the September 11th, the, uh, they came out of the, the, the government said that there were certain things that can no longer be sold at airports. And at the top of the list, knives. <laughs> so let me get this straight. We were selling knives. Responsible adult anywhere? <laughs> How could that have possibly happened? Not to be selling. I, I mean, seriously, none of us notice. I've been traveling on planes for 15 years. I've been on a, a plane every week. I you think I probably saw the knife and thought, oh, gotta be rubber. <laughs> no, why would they be selling knives in an airport? Are there bass fishermen who like to gut them in the plane? <laughs> sell a knife in an airport. It's got nothing to do with uh, with terrorism. It has to do with you don't sell a knife to someone who's getting in a confined space. <laughs> where they can drink all the liquor they want. <laughs> and then they're sitting there and they're in coach and they're going, God damn it, I should be in first class. <laughs> but I didn't say trade. <laughs> A few 
few more drinks, and then they gotta take a piss, but there's a long line, and they're thinking, not anymore. <laughs> wandering through the airport, returning to hearth and home, stops and goes, I need a knife! <laughs> the kids have a coconut, I'll buy a machete! <laughs> you know, if you're afraid of uh, air travel, don't be. Uh, I've been on 60 planes since September 11th, and I'll be honest with you, uh, airport security couldn't be slower. <laughs> Magnificently slow. And slower may not be better, but it's the illusion of better. It really is the sense that they must be working hard. And you want to buy into that sense. Because while you're standing in line, you want to be thinking, you know, the reason that we're moving at this intolerable pace is because they want everything to be safe and secure on my flight. I'm sure of that. You want to keep that thought in your head. Because if you lose it, by the time you get to that metal detector, You'll be a terrorist. <laughs> we went from what was an ineptly shitty security system to a superbly shitty. <laughs> it really is. It's magnificently shitty. The stuff I see now is just pop. It's like being at the movies. So I watched the. Uh, the other day in Newark, where a woman with a, traveling with a, uh, two twins, two tw they're twins, they're both, they're two years old, two-year-old twins, okay? And uh, she's alone, alone with two-year-olds, two. <laughs> they told her to take the stroller she had and to put them on the conveyor belt so they could be x-rayed. And I was, why? Why? Something horrible happened on September 11th. These people have nothing to do with it. There's no reason to stop her. You have to look at people who you might have to tussle with. That's the deal. That's the fucking deal, okay? It's not a question of maybe, no. That's the deal. You can't lose your grip. Not everybody is the enemy, all right? We've gotten so overly paranoid, it defies fucking description. You don't put those fucking strollers on there. Not at all. Do you think that this mother, who's got twins, had time to trundle on down to the workshop? And turn the strollers into a weapon? stroller, how long is it going to take a two-year-old to find it? <laughs> you have a mother with twins who are two years old, you get them on the airplane immediately. You don't fuck with them with security. You don't freak the kids out. You're freaking the kids out. Why don't you just poke them in the eye and stuff? <laughs> Give them a little enema before they get on the plane. Right? Psychically fuck with children before they're getting on an airplane, you fucking idiot. Because the only terrorists she's bringing on the plane are those fucking kids. <laughs> Let's say she's carrying a weapon, okay? Let's say she's got it in her bra, she's got a gun, okay? What's she gonna do? She's got two kids with her. She's gonna turn to the people next to her. You hold Frank, you hold those stout. I'm going to the cockpit to kick ass. <laughs> guy yesterday stopped me after the act and said, I he saw a guy with a prosthetic leg and they made him take it off because they wanted to look inside it. <laughs> it's just fucking, it's like, uh, I watched, I was in Omaha, Nebraska, so you can see Omaha, Rolla, ho oh, oh, yeah. it's an expressway. <laughs> in Omaha, I watched, there's a woman in her late 70s who weighed no more than 90 pounds, was in a wheelchair that was being taken to the airport. It was an airport wheelchair. She was mobile but frail, meaning if you went like this, she'd fall down. <laughs> they patted her down. They patted her down. They patted her down. They patted her legs and her 
bird-like arms. They bent her over and patted her back because she might have a hump where she would keep nail clippers. <laughs> As he finished, the male security guard, he brought over the female security guard. It looked like the warden in one of those lesbian prison movies. <laughs> and he had her at the bottom of the wheelchair. And as I watch this, I'm looking at like the woman in her late 70s, and they're like searching her, like she, you know, at any moment she could like gum them or something. <laughs> And that's the point where you want to scream something like, Stop it, you fox! <laughs> but you can't, because your journey will end. <laughs> that's why I take rawhide for those situations, because instead of screaming, I put the rawhide in my mouth, and I twitch for a while. <laughs> my advantage because they see that and they put me toward the front of the plane because they're afraid I might have a seizure. <laughs> you take the people away who were doing that to her. Those security guards had lost their minds. They reached a the point of complete paranoia. They couldn't see who was sitting in front of them. It's ludicrous. I mean, because the enemy uh, may be unscrupulous, but they are not masters of disguise. <laughs> If someone cannot lift their own bag and put it by themselves into the overhead bin, get them on the plane. Get them on the plane as quickly as possible. There's no reason to fuck around with these. It. There's, there's none. It's a complete loss of proportion, dimension, and there are other words, and I don't even know what the fuck they are. My favorite was a woman who was in a, a motorized wheelchair. Motorized. She can't walk. Can't walk. Can't walk! Woman is coming in her late 60s. She can't walk! <clears throat> Let's get her into security as quickly as possible. They drove her through the metal detector, which was spectacular. Because the metal detector can't pick up small metal, but if it's got a big thing, woohoo! It's like fireworks in the Star Spangled Banner play. It's a halftime Super Bowl. This woman was extremely distinguished looking. Uh, striking gray hair, impeccably dressed, wearing mink, had, uh, or, you know, had, on, uh, had on jewels. The, uh, it was unbelievable. The only way I could really describe her, she looked as if Protestantism had sprung from her womb. <laughs> They thought she was carrying a flamethrower! <laughs> I could understand if she was dressed in a clown outfit. <laughs> and her orange hair was the one side. And she had uh, odd symbols on her face and fucked up makeup. 666 on her head. <laughs> and a chihuahua in her lap and she had her finger up its ass, okay? <laughs> And you don't stop her, and the reason you let her on the plane is because the enemy has actually hired her to work for them. <laughs> they deserve to win. <laughs> Bottom line is this. Bottom line is, is that the equipment that we use to examine things at the airport doesn't work. The x-ray machine doesn't work. I don't care who you hire. I don't care if you're private or public. I don't give a fuck if it's federal or, you know, I don't give a shit who you hire. The machine that x-rays doesn't work. The metal detectors don't work. That's the bottom line. You know? And you get a machine that works. You get, I think we have the technology that you create something that can find shit in a stationary fucking suitcase. <laughs> to the point that when it sees something bad, it goes, danger, danger. <laughs> you just do it. Don't tell me we can't do it. I just watched the war. The war was on when? At night. 
But what did they do? They turned it into day. <laughs> and you can turn night into day, <laughs> figure out the equipment, fuck that. <laughs> Don't tell me we can't, it's all a question of what you want. You know, in my lifetime, for reasons that escaped me, we went from a, uh, a, a basically a, uh, a rotary phone that was so big and so heavy that if a puma came at me, I could kill it. <laughs> It's this big, and when I shove it up my ass, the fax comes out. <laughs> Just a side note, if anybody here works for Sprint, go fuck yourself. <laughs> This close to the finish line, laughed himself. <laughs> Jerry Fowell, two days after September 11th, said that the reason that God had allowed this to happen was because there were certain groups of people in this country. Groups like, and he pointed the, the pagans, which I, I think is a motorcycle group. <laughs> right? Now he said it was the feminists. Feminists, can you imagine? First off, that he even met any. I didn't even think he knew what the word was, except in maybe a, a napkin. That's a feminist napkin, isn't it? Uh, I mean, how would he know? I, but he said it was the feminist fault. I thought that's odd that a group of women had, had left their, the homes and left the kitchen precisely because they, they were sick of it and they really wanted to enter the workforce. They wanted to do things that men did. And they wanted the same pay as men. As a matter of fact, what they really wanted was to be in much in charge of society as men were. But God looked into their kitchens <laughs> and he noticed that there was no stew on the stove. <laughs> And the spice rack was in disarray. <laughs> God was displeased. <laughs> and so he said, I will smoke them. <laughs> if there's a message to my act, it's pretty simple. It's leave a tip. <laughs> Whenever you serve food and liquor, you leave a tip and you've got no options anymore. People who work in the service industry are completely screwed over. They make in New York City two thirty-seven an hour. Yeah, yeah, it allows them to live in the city for negative minutes. <laughs> that was precisely the reaction. What? It was precise. That's precise. That's on time. It's supposed to not just lay off. But that's what they make, they make 237 an hour, which allows them, usually at the end of the shift, they like to pool some of that money and buy a bullet, and one of them tries to swallow it. <laughs> it's always amazing. It's, uh, you leave a tip. The only time they have the option not to leave a tip is if your service person took a shit on your tip. <laughs> and if they did that, you're going to want to leave extra, because I'll tell you, you're never going to forget it. <laughs> Memory. You want to leave 20 percent? Why? None of us know how to do 15. <laughs> I always think it's kind of silly. If somebody gets a 20 dollar bill, you know, you pay a four dollar tip. How tough is that? You know, what are you going? Ooh, no, I'm going to save that dollar because I want to turn it into dimes and shove them up my ass. <laughs> If I learn one thing from September 11th, it's basically the, the way in which I deal with trauma is through humor. That's how I, pretty much how I deal with life, I guess. But the, really, it's how I dealt with the trauma. I got, what amazed me, too, is the, the, the idiocy that went on in the press after September 11th. And, and the media, I mean, CNN, MSNBC, uh, Fox Network News, the, the whole group of them just uh, went round the bend. I mean, it was a very difficult time, and we needed information quickly, you know? 
basically we, we, we went from September 11th when we didn't give a shit about Afghanistan to like a whole fucking seminar. It was like, fuck, I gotta go to this class? <laughs> and it would be one thing, and what they should have done is had one person after another explaining it simply. Just fucking tell us what's going on. Explain it simply. I'm not an idiot, but no, they had to put a person there, but they couldn't get his information fast enough. There was a person, and for some reason, I don't know, on the bottom, all of a sudden, there came a line of information going at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> the candy store is blown up. What? What? Where? Where? You just get a little bit of it, because you can only read part of it and listen. What the fuck? Nobody can do that. Then they added another line going this way. Then they started giving the stock report. Yeah, that's just what I need to be reminded that somebody else is getting fucking rich. Then there's a little smiley son, you know, oh, it's 32, and okay, fuck you, I don't care. <laughs> In the upper left-hand corner, there's a rabbit wiping himself. I never know what's going on. Literally, four days into the war, I had ADD. Super you. You ever traveled? Irony dead. 80% of the country doesn't even know what the fuck it is. <laughs> and the rest of us who know what it is couldn't define it. We just know when somebody says it, we go, oh, that, that's ironic. <laughs> Too. 
I, I believe that. And, 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 you know, happy Easter to you guys. And a happy Passover or whatever that is. That's mine. I'm Jewish, so I'm not very, I'm, well, I'm not even Jewish, really. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I, 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 you know, I was brought up Jewish, and, but I, I left early, real early. <laughs> I didn't join up with any other group because that's the same thing, <laughs> different song. So, uh, <laughs> based on my thing, oh boy, when they added a, they added a nice looking kid with it. Okay, great story. Um, but it was not, you know, that, we, you see, when I was young, we had uh, Hanukkah, and the first Hanukkah that I could remember, my parents gave me a top to play with. They called it a dreidel, but it's a top. <laughs> and as I looked, it was truly the, the dumbest toy in the history of civilization. I thought, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to be Jewish for long. I mean, if they can't grasp the concept of a toy in that simple, God will elude them. Don't get me wrong, though, I think religion's important. I just wish, that, and I think it really helps. And I watch friends of mine get through this thing because of it. Religion is important, and patriotism is important, but religion and patriotism without a sense of humor, then you're in the shit. <laughs> that's, that's where our enemy ended up. These people hadn't had a joke told in about 1,500 years. <laughs> they were patriotic and they were religious, there's no doubt about it, but if you don't, you know, if they had any humor, nobody could have stood up and said, if you kill yourself in a suicide to bring down the infidels, you will meet 72 virgins in heaven. <laughs> Immediately, the room would have been a pause, and then the room would have gone, ah! <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know, that's funny. Because how insane is that to think you meet 72 virgins in heaven when I haven't met one on earth? <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. You're incredible. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you.